Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, I'm Fran Excel, Mindset Coach, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. So today I'm going to be talking about how to combat imposter syndrome. Do you ever have that feeling of being found out? Like um, despite all your accomplishments, at any point someone's going to call you out and reveal you as a big old fake who has no idea what they're doing. The kind of feeling of like, who am I to do this gremlin? Just niggling away. So that feeling of, of not being good enough, it just gets louder and louder and louder. So why even bother trying to show up, right? Ever felt like that? Yeah, me too. Along with most of the population. About 70%, to be fair. That is the joy of imposter syndrome. So, <laughs> so what is imposter syndrome? So the term imposter syndrome actually came from some research that was done by two clinical psychologists back in the 70s. Um, it was a study primarily of high achieving women, funnily enough, as they thought that they were the only sufferers. But more recently, studies have, have shown that it, it affects men and women pretty equally. Women were just that much better at talking about it back then. Back then, men were sort of very proud and wouldn't, wouldn't ever admit to these things. And you'll find out a little bit more about that in a moment. But Harvard uh, Business Review states that imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. Imposters suffer from chronic self-doubt a sense of intellectual fraudulence that override any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. OK, so what's actually going on? The bottom line is that fear is activating um, the, the amygdala, the fear center in your brain, which causes the fight or flight mode, which we've talked about before. It causes that to kick in. So instead of preparing for the saber toothed tigers and bears, <laughs> you then start pumping the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline all over your body. So it doesn't feel good at all. And it's really bad for your health in the long, in the long run. I'll do a whole other episode of stress on stress soon because it's really important. There's some things about stress that you need to know. But what does imposter syndrome actually cause? Bottom line, fear. OK, fear of being caught out, fear of failure, low self-worth. But what this does is this can lead to perfectionism. So think about this in, in terms of your career, your family life. Think about it in terms of your business, whichever way, whichever thing that you're, you're working through at the moment. So it can lead to perfectionism, which leads to overworking to make sure you don't get found out, which, of course, can then lead to burnout, a perpetual state of anxiety, stress, feelings of shame. And even depression. In short, it will hold you back if you don't work through it. It absolutely will. This is actually what made me quit my first business. So a lot of you know I actually had my, my first dream. I, I'm a trained silversmith as well. Um, my first business was actually starting to create and sell my jewellery. And I quit because of imposter syndrome. And I don't want that to happen to any of you because it doesn't have to, because it absolutely is completely manageable again it's, it's all about that awareness but it's going to keep you stuck think about it if you feel like a fraud you're not going to put yourself out there you're not going to put yourself forward for that speaking gig that could propel your business forward that article that you're the perfect person to write that huge opportunity that could absolutely propel your business forward is going to keep you stuck and make everything you do feel that much harder so it's pretty important we nip it in the bud, right? <laughs> so what can you do about imposter syndrome? Lots. First thing and the biggest thing is please talk about it. The main reason it often goes unnoticed is that people struggling with imposter syndrome feel like they're keeping a dirty little secret. All right. When you realize everyone has these thoughts at some point, it's what I call an inevitable entrepreneurial mindset gremlin it's an, an inevitable mindset gremlin in general 
it's a lot stronger in entrepreneurs especially when you're out there on your own and you don't have that external validation all the time but in your career in your family life this will come up all the time but when you realize that everybody else has those thoughts at some point you can really feel a weight lift from your shoulders you're not alone anymore and you can also help other people breathe that same sigh of relief in the process when they realize that they're not alone. Okay, so a couple of great ways to make sure you're talking to someone who will really get it and have the tools to go through it is obviously to get a coach or a mentor who will provide a completely non judgmental space for you to share. We'll understand what's going on, we'll be able to help you get through it so much more quickly, and we'll help you understand what's going on in your own head and realize how untrue it is what you're saying to yourself okay you can also consider group coaching pro pro programs where you'll obviously build a whole network of like-minded people so it's a double whammy really if you find those um masterminds and things like that or, or just facebook groups like mine you know there's so many spaces you can go but the more i cannot stress this enough the more you talk about this the less it becomes an issue genuinely it's become so much easier to push through it so what's the next thing you can do find the evidence all right a huge part of imposter syndrome is actively avoiding the evidence that you're not a fraud so write down a whole list of all the reasons that you know what you're talking about all the training you've done the hours of reading the life experience the qualifications you've got books you've read time spent training online anything you can think of nothing is silly write down every single reason you know what you're talking about and you know you're not fraud this last time you've achieved something when you have felt really really capable and proud of yourself afterwards remind your brain of those moments because what that does is help calm the fear center in your brain it tells it tells your brain that this situation is okay it's fine to step out of your comfort zone because good things happen when you do. Stop looking at successes that you have had as luck and appreciate your hard work and effort. I see this so often when you say to someone, oh my God, that's amazing, that thing you did. Oh, well, you know, it's, I just got lucky. No, you didn't. You did the work and you did the thing. So acknowledge it, all right? Acknowledge that hard work and effort. On the flip side, though, are you actually being a bit of an imposter? If you are, what do you need to do to not be? Is it that you're doing something that you know you haven't got your reps in yet? You know, what can you do to get them? It doesn't mean you can't do it. Just be really honest with yourself of actually, if it's niggling at you, is because you're perhaps not being as authentic as you want to be. And it's something that you dream of doing, but you're not quite there yet. Okay, so just be really, really honest with yourself about that. It's not a negative thing. It just means you need to go out there, get your training, get your reps in, get your list built up, and then you are good to go. Another one is affirmations. All right, I've talked about affirmations a few times, and I do really need to do an entire episode on them. These little nuggets literally rewire neural pathways in your brain to not go to the negative on autopilot. So it uses a process called neuroplasticity, but it's also a little bit of visualization. You're trying to tell your brain what you want to believe. For example, use, I'm amazing at what I do and am highly qualified and get amazing results for my clients. Honestly, try that every single day for a month and tell me that you don't feel different. Okay, and this is something that I do. I call it proof of love. So keep a little folder in your phone or whatever you need to do, so screenshot things, where you're keeping a folder of all the lovely things that people say about you and to you and who you've made a difference to. And if you're ever feeling like a, like a fraud, you go into that folder and you read every single one of those. They can't all be wrong. They just can't. There comes a point where you have to start believing it because your brain's like, well, hang on a minute, you're telling me this isn't true, but hang on, there's all this evidence here that says it is true. So please, please do that. I love that. It's an amazing little tool. Next one. Take a damn compliment. All right. Seriously. Even if it's uncomfortable, just say thank you. Give them a compliment back if you like. You'll feel uncomfortable, but you will eventually take that compliment because when you when you bat it back, you're telling your brain you don't believe it. That's just going to make it worse. So don't do it. Take the compliment. 
The next one is obviously, you're talking to me here, journal. So use prompts like the one I mentioned before about listing your achievements, um, listing all the things that you've done, listing all the reasons why you're good. I love list journaling. It's a really, really great thing to do if you're not the Dear Diary type. It's something that I find hugely helpful. And I read back over my lists, add to my lists. I do it time and time again. But journaling will help you really keep track of what you've achieved so far. So then you can look back over entries and see just how far you've come. And you'll be amazed how quickly that you build up these things when you have that determination. Use my, um, you know, how to find more time episode where I teach you all the things that you can do with dead time. Use that to study. If you're feeling like an imposter because you genuinely feel like you haven't studied enough, use that time. But you can also, when it comes to the journaling side of things, check out my printable journals in Etsy, Fran Excel Printables. Um, and there's loads of tips and tricks and ideas in there um, that you can that you can use. But please understand it is part of the process. Every time that uber successful person that you admire up levels, launches a new program, anything, anything new, they feel like an imposter too. They feel like an imposter to begin with. Then they do the thing and guess what? They stop feeling like an imposter. Okay, so there you have it. Some great ways to keep that imposter syndrome gremlin in check. When you actually understand and you name it, it really does feel much, much, much easier to deal with when you're naming your gremlins. So the imposter syndrome, comparisonitis, procrastination, all these gremlins are inevitable. They are all solvable, but it does make it that awareness like, oh, right, okay, it's imposter syndrome going on. Stop feeling like it's a dialogue that you're having with yourself because it's not. I promise you, it is not. It's your amygdala going bing, 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 going, oh, no, stop. This is a bit uncomfortable, slightly out your comfort zone. Don't let it. Stop having that internal dialogue and start naming it for what it is. Remember that you are the only one that can put your message into the world that somebody else needs to hear right at that time. Said by you you can choose to push through the feeling or you can let it stop you it really is up to you but once you do do it you will grow in confidence you will only grow in confidence so know that so only talk about what you know you know you've just got to be a couple of steps in front of somebody to be able to help them you don't have to know everything we will never know everything the reality is there will always be someone who knows more than you but they will also <laughs> always be people who know less so talk to them yeah does that all make sense there's so much that you can do and it is just a part of the process and all those feelings of who am i who do i think i am to do this is all those little self-doubts creeping in it's your brain going crazy and you can push through it and that is your choice so i hope that was really really helpful and until next week, I will see you there.